I have a question. Uh, Bakrid is very Karib, very near this time, and the Muslim fans believe that uh, ki on the occasion of Bakrid, they uh, sacrifice the goats, buffaloes, and cows, and all that. And according to the Islam, uh, insan is important, and every fans should be pity and kind on animals and uh, human being and all that. Then, if they believe in this, then why they give the sacrifice of goats, cows, and buffaloes on the occasion of Bakrid? Whether they should do it, whether it is in favor of humanity or uh, humanity or insanity? Brother, that's a very good question. That why are we sacrificing goat on Bakrid? If it's not a Bakrid, can we sacrifice no, goat? No, no, I uh, any animals, any. No, animals. can we sacrifice goat if there's no Bakrid? They, they sacrifices, they kills. And I'm they asking you the question. That means if no Bakrid, if we sacrifice the animal, it is allowed. No. I'm Generally, why do yeah, you? Yeah. Uh, so okay, no. question, why do you have non-veg? Correct. No, no. I'm not getting what you are saying. Your main question is why do you have non-veg? Why do you have meat? Actually, I want to say on the occasion of Bakrid and other occasion as well. Oh, it's okay. Uh, I'll answer both. On the occasion of Bakrid, Allah says in the Quran in Surah Hajj, chapter number 22, that the blood and the meat does not go to Allah, it is your piety which goes to Allah. So unlike other religions, in other religions when they sacrifice, they keep it in the altar, in the name of deity. And who eats? God Almighty eats? In Islam, when we sacrifice, what do we do? One third compulsory minimum we have to give to the poor people. One third, we have to give to the relatives and friends. One third you can keep for yourself. So maximum you can keep is one third for yourself. If you want to give full in charity also you can give. So when we are sacrificing, what are we doing? We are benefiting the human We are giving them food to eat. Now giving food to eat is good or bad, brother? Giving food to the poor people to eat, is it good or bad? In humanity, is it good or bad? Good. So therefore, Islam is a religion of humanity. Now, you may ask the question, what about killing animals? But what about animals? In short, a Muslim can be a very good Muslim even by being a pure vegetarian. It's not compulsory in Islam that you should have non-veg, but since Almighty God has given us permission to have non-veg, why should we not have non-veg? Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Maida, Chapter number five, verse number one. The four-footed animal which has been made lawful for you. Allah says in Surah Nail, chapter number 16, verse number five, that the cattle has been made for you so that you benefit from them and of the meat you can eat. The same message repeated in Surah Mu'minun, chapter number 23, verse number 21, that in the cattle, from the belly you drink milk and of the meat you eat. So since Almighty God has given us permission, why should we not have it? Now coming to the logical aspect today, that in non-veg food, in flesh food, it is rich in vitamins, and it is only food which has got complete protein. Our human body, there are total 23 amino acids required by the human body, out of which eight are not synthesized in the body. It has to be given from the external diet. There is no veggie which gives you all the eight amino acids. It is a flesh food you all the amino acids. Furthermore, if you analyze the set of teeth of the herbivorous animal, goat, sheep, they have got flat set of teeth. They have flesh. If we analyze the set of teeth, tiger, leopard, lion, they have got, they have got a carnivorous set of teeth. They have canine set of teeth. They have vegetables. See a set of teeth. We have vegetables. Why did he give us the pointed teeth? For what? You have the flesh food. Furthermore, the digestive system of the herbivorous animal, cow, goat, sheep, can only digest vegetables. They can't digest flesh food. The digestive system of the carnivorous animal. Tiger, leopard, lion can only digest flesh food. They can't digest vegetables. But the digestive system of the human being has got small intestine and long intestine. We can digest vegetable as well as flesh food. 
If Almighty God wanted us to have only vegetables, why did he give our digestive system we can digest both? Furthermore, there is a misconception that Hindus should not have non-veg. It's misconception. If you read the Hindu scriptures, it's mentioned in Manusmiti, chapter number 5, verse number 30, that Almighty God created some animals to eat and some to be eaten. If you eat the animals that have been created to be eaten, you're not doing a sin. It's mentioned in Manusmiti, chapter number 5, verse number 31, that Almighty God has created some animal for sacrifice. So if you kill the sacrificial animal, you're not doing a sin. It is mentioned in Manusmiti, chapter number 5, verse number 40, that killing in sacrifice is not a sin. There are various references in the Hindu scriptures and the Vedas that the sages and sons, they had non-veg, they even had beef. If you read Mahabharat Anushasan Parv, chapter number 88, you know the story of the Pandavas. You know Pandavas? Five brothers. The eldest brother Yudhishthir, he asks Bhishma that what should we give in Yagna, in Puja, so that our ancestors will be satisfied. So Bhishma replies, that if you give herbs and shrubs and vegetables, our ancestors will be satisfied for one month. If you give fish, for two months. If you give meat, for three months. If you give hair, rabbit, for four months. If you give goat, for five months. If you give bacon, for six months. If you give birds, for seven months. If you give deer, eight months. And the menu continues. If you give buffalo, for 11 months. If you give cow, our ancestors will be satisfied for one full year. And if you want your ancestors to be satisfied inexhaustibly, give red meat of goat or a rhinoceros. Who says that? Bhishma to Yudhishthir. The full menu is there. Vegetables, fish, rabbit, goat, everything is there. Buffalo, cow. So even in Hindu scriptures, eating non-veg is permitted. It is many of the Hindus, because they were being influenced by other philosophies of Ahimsa, they started practicing it. And this people who follow Ahimsa, that's non-violence, not killing any living creature. If any human being can lead a life without killing living creatures, I'm for it. What they say, killing animal is a big sin because their life, killing life is prohibited. Today science has advanced and we have come to know that even the plants have got life. So by eating vegetables, you're killing life also. But the logic has changed. No, no, we understand that the plants have got life, but the plants can't feel pain. Therefore, killing a plant is a lesser sin as compared to killing an animal. For sake of argument, I agree. Today science tells us that the human ear can hear frequencies between 20 cycles per second to 20,000 cycles per second. Anything below and above, we can't hear. Today, science tells us that even the plant cries, but the human ear cannot hear. So there was a farmer in USA who had equipment which converted the cry of the plant to the human ear, and used to know that that required water. Someone would say, okay, okay, fine, I agree that the plant can feel pain, but you know, it has got two or three senses less. Therefore, killing a plant is a lesser sin as compared to killing an animal which has got five senses. For sake of argument, I agree that plants have got two senses less as compared to the animal. I am asking you a question. That suppose your brother, God forbid, if he is born deaf and dumb, and when he grows up, someone comes and kills him. So will you go and tell the judge, me Lord, give the murderer less punishment because my brother, he was deaf and dumb. Will you say that? You will tell the judge, give him a bigger punishment. My brother was masoom. He could not hear, he could not speak. So in Islam, it does not work like that. Two senses more, two senses less. Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Baqarah, chapter 2, verse number 168, eat of the good things we have provided for you. What is good, what is tajab, you can have. And furthermore, I personally have got no problem. If the non-Muslim don't want to have non veg I've got no problem. Personally, only when they tell me it's a sin or you tell me it's against humanity, I give the reply. Personally, if the non-Muslims continue having vegetarians, good for me. If all the non-Muslims start having non-veg, then the price of mutton and beef will go high. Personally, I've got no problem.